Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to In-Depth. Today, we're going to talk about um, a verse from the third epistle of St. John that he sent to his beloved, and we're going to find out who that is now. So starting at verse 1. The elder, that a beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my ch children walk in truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers, who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such, that we may become fellow workers of the truth. In this passage here, the word truth is mentioned four times. And we just start to wonder, what is truth? And what is a manner worthy of God that is also mentioned here? Going back to St. John's account of the Gospel, chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we see the truth is defined as Jesus. It is Him. As we know that He is the way to salvation. He is the way to the kingdom of God. And He is our source of a good life. And we see the truth here. And going back to the verse, verse, the elder to the beloved guys in whom I love in truth, whom I love in Jesus Christ. So the truth is everything about Jesus. And using that to treat everyone in a manner worthy of God. It's as if when I see you, I see God in you and I treat you in such a manner with all respect, with all reverence. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus tells us, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What an honor! Where Jesus is, he wants to teach us, he selects us, he chose us to teach us. And in his teachings, he's very gentle, unlike anything we've, other, we've experienced before. He says, you will find rest for your souls. Taking that rest will help us be at peace with others. Sometimes my to-do to list is huge. And someone at home comes and asks me to help him with something and I just refuse and I blow up. Because inside, I, I have a large amount of stress. And right now, in my mind, I picture that family member is the one who increased it, but it's not them. Initially, it's me because I didn't find that rest in Jesus. I didn't sit down with myself and be at peace. I burden myself. And at the end, I take it out on others. And then there is no way that I will treat a family member in a manner worthy of God if that's what I keep doing. And this is what Jesus is saying here. Learn from me. As he went, nobody was a burden to him. Whomever wanted help, he helped. Whomever wanted to be healed, he healed. Whomever wanted to listen to him, he talked to them and taught them. In the world, we find that nothing is enough. And that's why our list is huge. We always want to do more. We think we don't have enough. But David the prophet and king says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want nothing. He doesn't want anything. Just because he trusts in his shepherd, he knows that he will lack nothing because God is his shepherd. It's like a child who doesn't know what's out there in the world, yet he or she knows their parents and they know that they will provide for them they don't think of what next meal they're gonna have or what time or where or with who or if they're gonna go on a trip just to have fun they don't know where it's gonna be because the parent plans everything it's the same thing with God where David says here the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want in Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 13 it's a commandment you shall not have in your bags deferring weight a heavy and a light. In Proverbs 11 verse 1, Solomon tells us, Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, 
but a just weight is his delight. Taking the, the idea of a scale and weights in perspective and how we treat others, sometimes we have the preferred people who, when we see them, we treat very nicely, very respectably, and others we think low of, and for that reason we don't treat just as good. But here is telling us, you shall not have in your bag differing weights, a heavy and a light, just as you treat one person one way, you treat the other. No differing weights, nothing. Everyone, you treat them in a manner worthy of God. Taking Jesus, as he said, I am the truth. We should talk to everyone as we ought to talk to Jesus, in all reverence and respect, in humility, listening to what he has to say and responding afterwards. In addressing him, if I am in, in the army and I have someone who is superior, I will salute him. I will stand in respect of him. I will not talk unless I'm talked to. Taking that in perspective, again, having a great king, whom doesn't, he doesn't want us to be just in his army and, and just obey his voice. No, he wants us to be a family. He wants us to run towards him and just run at him for a big hug. It is his good pleasure to satisfy his children. So we treat him with love just because we see that in him. In the same way, we treat others with love. In Luke chapter 10, a certain lawyer stood and asked Jesus, asked him, how do I in inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him the two commandments that summed up the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. You should love your God and love your neighbor. So he was asking, who is my neighbor? So Jesus gave a parable. He said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by, now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring, and pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took good care of him. And then Jesus asked, well, who was neighbor to this wounded man? And everybody answered, the Samaritan. And he said, go and do likewise. And at that time, there was enmity between the Jews and the Samaritans. And Jesus was speaking to the Jews at that time. The Jews thought lower of the Samaritan. And Jesus here elevated the man. He honored the Samaritan man. Let's look at what happened. So the priest went saw him and passed by. And sometimes we do that with others. We see someone in need of help and we just look at the problem. Like, uh oh, I have my own. I'm just going to keep going. The Levite went and looked. And sometimes we go and we listen to someone, but we don't do anything about it. That's as far as we go. Now the Samaritan, who was at enmity with this man, thought nothing of, of this enmity, but rather he put him on his own animal, walked and dragged the animal and paid for his stay in the inn. And saying, that's not, that's exactly not having differing weights. Looking at everyone the same way, looking at everyone as a child of God, as my brother and sister. And I pray that we all treat each other in a manner worthy of God. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Andy. I'll see you next time.